And joining us now is Senator Bob Menendez from New Jersey. Senator, it's always a pleasure to see you, sir. I just want to get your thoughts on the latest on the uh, Russian sanctions and what is being done to help the people of Ukraine. Well, Jose, I'm, I'm uh, really uh, uh, happy to see that the administration levied a full blocking sanctions on Sherbank, uh, one of the most significant banks in Russia, uh, against more individuals, including Putin's uh, family members, uh, and that the economic news continues to tighten uh, around uh, the butcher uh, uh, of Moscow's neck, uh, and that the beginning of these economic consequences in Russia are being felt by the average Russian uh, people, and that has consequences for Putin as well. At the same time, uh, we have ramped up our lethal defensive uh, assistance uh, to Ukraine uh, through our diplomacy. Uh, we have gotten other countries uh, uh, nearby in Ukraine to uh, transfer, for example, uh, uh, Soviet-era tanks uh, and air defense uh, systems that the Ukrainians know how to use, don't have to be trained on, and can help them uh, hopefully achieve victory in this battle against Russia. Senator, Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Mark Milley said this week the war in Ukraine could last Last for years. The U.S. has already given Ukraine hundreds of millions, maybe billions of dollars in weapons and other aid. Will, will the U.S. be able to keep that up if the conflict does indeed go on for a long time? Well, it won't have to be just the United States. I mean, Europe uh, and the NATO countries understand uh, that this war in Ukraine is about the European continent, is about their security. And so uh, I would believe that their assistance uh, will be continuing and actually ramp up um, because it is clear to me uh, that Putin has no end to his desires. And I think it's very clear to the Europeans now as well. So I would expect them to be a very very strong contributing partner to the Ukrainians to help them achieve uh, success in the long run. And Senator, there are growing concerns about the impact of the war on the global food supply, Russia, especially Ukraine. They, together, they supply more than a quarter of the world's wheat. What does the United States or other countries need to do to prevent this potential food crisis? Well, that's why the senior Republican on the Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Risch, and myself sent a letter to the president uh, saying we have to have a strategy for global food insecurity. Uh, 12 million Ukrainians, about uh, nearly, I think, a third of the entire uh, Ukrainian population, uh, are insecure in terms as it relates to food and medical supplies. Four million plus have already left the country. Uh, and when you add to the global pandemic, pandemic uh, uh, challenge as well. Uh, we are facing uh, uh, the potential of a food insecurity crisis uh, that we have not seen in some time and the greatest displacement of people uh, since World War II. So this is why uh, it is my hope that the administration will ramp up uh, a master plan that includes the United Nations and other countries to deal with the incredible food insecurity we're seeing across the globe. Senator, as you know, right now the United Nations is taking a vote on whether Russia should be uh, taken out of the United Nations Human Rights Commission, a human rights commission which includes China, Russia, Cuba, Venezuela, and others. Do you see that this is a place where Putin should be held up as being a violator of, of human rights? If the atrocities that we have seen in Bukha and throughout Ukraine uh, that uh, Russian soldiers have uh, committed uh, in pursuit of the orders given by Vladimir Putin, uh, then I don't know uh, what constitutes human rights violations. It is clear uh, that Russia is a human rights violator. It should not be on the council that ultimately judges others in terms of human rights violations. And uh, at a minimum, you would think that they would be taken out of the human rights council uh, at the UN uh, based upon the atrocities that have been committed in Russia. And for that fact, in Syria, as well. Uh, the Russians did the same exact thing. What we are seeing in Ukraine is what we saw in Syria. Unfortunately, the world didn't uh, act as it should have as it relates to Syria, but we are seeing it in Ukraine, and it's a, a redux uh, of what he did in Syria. 
Senator, you support ending Title 42, which allows the U.S. to turn away people at the border without hearing the asylum cases on a basis of public health. NBC News has learned a bipartisan group of senators will introduce a bill today to block Title 42 from being lifted because they say the administration doesn't have enough plans in place to deal with more migrants and asylum seekers coming to the border. What do you make of that? Well, look, uh, Title 42, which was being used in the first instance by the Trump administration, was abhorrent then, and it is abhorrent being used by the Biden administration. Title 42 is part of the problem, not the solution to the problem. When you use Title 42, instead of using our immigration laws to create final judgments in which people who cannot enter the country, have no right to enter the country, are ordered not only then, but permanently to be barred from the country, uh, you you create a revolving door. Title 42 uh, says to people in the hemisphere, keep coming, and when you get lucky, you cross the border, but it doesn't stop the flows. And so it's using our laws as they exist on the books to adjudicate whether somebody has a right to enter the United States or not. And when they don't, and you adjudicate it that way, now you have a powerful tool to avoid those people from coming back. And Senator, I want to read something you tweeted yesterday. Uh, I want to put it up. A reminder for anyone who needs to hear this. You wrote, responsible stewardship of our border and honoring our moral and legal obligations to treat immigrants and refugees with dignity are not mutually exclusive. Senator, how do you have that? How can that be accomplished? By rigorous enforcement of the laws that exist in our immigration laws. Somebody comes and says, I'm seeking asylum. There is a process to determine whether or not they qualify. And when they qualify, yes, they get asylum. And when they don't, guess what? They get an order that says, no, you cannot come into the country and you won't be allowed into the country in the future. Uh, that's not what Title 42 does. Uh, Title 42 expels them and then they can come back again and again and again. So it is the rigorous use of our existing laws and the resources necessary to deal with the border challenges. And in the longer term, which we will perennially face this issue as we've had over various seasons, where we see a surge during this time of the year is the root causes in Central America and the hemisphere. And unless you deal with those root causes, uh, I don't care who's president, uh, it will continue to happen in the years ahead. That's the ultimate solution. But the enforcement of our laws as they exist is the real intermediate solution, not Title 42. Senator Bob Menendez, it's always a pleasure to see you. I thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jose.